It's time now for this week's session on proper English pronunciation. And uh, thank you for watching uh, Friday Briefing. My name is Ken Mijungu and Damien Evans has been our sign language interpreter tonight. But right now, mind your language begins. Let me hand you over to Willis, the word master, joining us from Kisumu. Willis, over to you. Christmas, Christmas, Christmas. I know that has been the word of the day as many people settled for the Christmas celebrations. Wherever you are, even if you used Christmas, Christmas, Christmasy, anyway, all amount to Christmas for the day. But now it's that time when we get down to good English pronunciations on your favorite segment, Mind Your Language, and I'm Willis Ocheng. Let's begin by focusing or exploring the sounds that letter D takes. Just take a look at your screen or see what we are displaying for you on the screen. And the first sound that letter D takes is simply D, D. Just like in dog, dog, if you like, also in desk. The same, same letter D takes sound J, just like in the word, Gradual, gradual. You don't say gradual. So it's D, but the sound is J, gradual. Or if you like, graduation. Now, the third sound that letter D takes in English language is T, T, just like a T. If you like, think of the word, or you can take a look at the word pushed. Pushed. We don't say push D. You say pushed. Pushed, just like another word that I may give you is kicked. Kicked, it's a D, but the sound is T. That is the way to handle them. Clear? Great. Now, we move to the words that I promised you about last Friday, and they have the sequence or the letter sequence O-A-R. Many people find themselves saying boa, roa, and so, but that is not the case. The words take or have the sound that is long. That is the long back sound O. So you say bo, ro, and so. You can see the phonetic transcriptions on your screen. Otherwise, it's now time to get down to the collections of the week. And in our collections of the week, the first word, dear viewer, is right there on your screen and it's a very popular word for this year 2020. Now there are people who may say 2020, anyway you say 2020 but depending on where you are or where you live you may find somebody saying 2020 just leave that person alone but in careers of serious communication many people prefer the words and pronunciations that help to deliver the messages clearly but our first word is right there. You say quarantine, quarantine. That is confining a person or an animal who is suspected to be sick or to be having a disease or may be having a disease so that that disease does not spread to other people or other animals. And you say quarantine. Remember the word functions as a verb and also as a noun. But you say quarantine. That is the way to pronounce it. Now, our second word is a word that is also related to diseases. And in this case, it's a word that is a bit long. Don't say asymptomatic, asymptomatic. That A is a prefix, and it takes its name as the sound, A. So you say asymptomatic asymptomatic, not asymptomatic, that many people use locally, but innocently because of what we commonly hear around us. You get it clearly? Good. Now, our next word, which of course is displayed for you on the screen again, is a word that is also used very commonly at this moment. When we talk about HIV and AIDS, HIV and AIDS, or oh, when we talk about COVID-19, a disease that spreads very fast and is found in almost every part of a country or all over the world. 
the whole world. You find it spreads to various parts of the world or various parts of a country. You call it pandemic, pandemic. That is how you pronounce that word, pandemic. Then the next one is also a word that is a bit tricky but common around this time when we talk about something or a disease or something that is found regularly in a place or among a particular that is a particular group of people we say endemic can you say that endemic can you handle it good remember it's an adjective so you say endemic just like you'd say corruption is endemic in an organization endemic or a disease is endemic but it means regularly found in a place or among a particular group of people clear good now let's get to our next word when we talk about insects when we talk about insects who are in a large number or who are found in a place in a large number or that is a large group of insects we have that collective noun the word that is a collective noun and many people find themselves pronouncing the word you are now seeing on your screen as swarm but s w a r m you say swarm a swarm of locusts a swarm of locusts don't say swarm swarm is the past tense of swim that is s w a m but the one that we have is swarm swarm s w a r m clear great now let's get to the next one and our next word is a noun from the verb infest that is to exist in large numbers in a particular place especially when we talk about insects or animals so to infest a place to infest something but now the noun form which is our word for tonight you say infestation infestation don't say investation investation no infestation you have that voiceless if you like unvoiced sound f for that letter f infestation that is the pronunciation dear viewers now let's get to the next word the next word is a bit tricky not very common but we sometimes use it quite often when we talk about something that is morally bad something that is morally bad so it's also an adjective in this case now not even any moment but you sometimes find yourself maybe saying heinous heinous we don't have that in the english vocabulary you can check and if you get it then i'll give you a token or i'll give you something that you'll really really smile about but that is the way to spell it that is h e i n o u s and you say heinous heinous that part h e i takes the sounding hey hey then n o u s you say nas hey nas that is the right way to pronounce it and you can describe an act by saying a hey nas act now let's get to the next word and i know those who love drama would be very comfortable or literature for that matter would really love this word it has also been very popular this year 2020 on mind your language that you get only on ktn but now this word s o l i l o q u y can you try it wherever you are <laughs> we try because we are learning and nobody as i always say nobody is perfect or spotless when it comes to pronunciations especially when you are acquiring the sounds of a second or target language can you try it <laughs> i know many people innocently find themselves saying solilo kai solilo kai no you say soliloquy soliloquy we are talking about that monologue when you have an actor on stage and talking to himself as if that actor is trying to share certain thoughts with somebody or especially with the audience and you say audience not audience audience no simply audience the a and u in that word function as a digraph that is a combination of two letters representing one sound and it takes the long sound o audience just like 
August. But our key word is soliloquy. And you also say colloquy. Let's move on and we get to a word that I want to request you. Just take a look at your screen again, keenly. A very common word, dear viewers. But now, can you try to pronounce it? Try again. For those who said warrior, avoid that. We have the word war, and then this word is pronounced warrior. A warrior, a person who fights, a warrior. And then the plural, warriors. Don't say warriors. Warriors, common but inaccurate. You say warrior, warriors. Then, can you also try the last one, which is now on your screen again? The last word in our collections of the week is right there. Can you say it? <laughs> Let me ask you, our viewers, because we really enjoy a day like this one for those who always celebrate Christmas. Let me ask you, have you heard some people saying fla? Fla? Have you heard anybody saying fla? Oh, did you say fla as you are making an attempt? Then avoid it. This word is pronounced as flower, flower, unga, flower. Another word that has been very popular on manual language. And with that, let's now get to our feedback and those who sent in words from last weekend to tonight. So be attentive because I begin with a man called Ignatius Kitavi of Westland, Nairobi. You say hypotenuse hypotenuse. Remember, you can also end it with that voiceless sound. So you can say hypotenuse or hypotenuse. So please don't say hypotenuse. News would be inaccurate because just like you say news, news, N-E-W-S, news. So you don't say news. Can you listen or watch the news? News, no. News. So this one you also say hypotenuse or hypotenuse. Then your second word, you say crew, crew. Don't say crew, C-R-E-W, you say crew. Now, we have the Maclin, sister, the Maclin R. Nyamohanga of Kehancha Kuria. You say Santa Claus, Claus, Santa Claus. You may agree with me, dear viewer, that many people find themselves saying Santa Claus, Santa Claus. No, you say Santa Claus, Claus, with that sound Z and the long sound O, Claus. So Klaus, no, Claus. Then we have Sami Mwada of Muranga. You say avalanche, avalanche. Don't say avalanche, avalanche, no. In fact, you can say avalanche, avalanche. So avalanche, avalanche are acceptable, but not avalanche, clear? Good. Now, let's get to Thomas Musiokake of Makueni. Thomas, you say barista. Barista. Don't say barista. The stress is right at the onset. That is at the beginning of that word. Barista. And your second word, you say counsel. A counsel. Defense counsel for a lawyer. So don't say cancel. Cancel, as I've always explained, the way I've always been explaining to people, please. You say cancel, you would be talking about C-A-N-C-L. That is C-A-N-C-E-L. To cancel something. Kufutilia mbali kwa kiswahili. And as I always say, we must also love our other languages because the essence of any language on earth is communication. You are watching Mind Your Language and I'm Willis Ocheng. Let's get to the next person and that is Agatha, Agatha Kawera of Embu. You say audacity, audacity, not audacity. Your second word, you say audacious, audacious, not audacious. Audacious, audacious, no, audacious. Callistas Denje of Kongoea Mombasa, continuum, continuum, and your second word, conundrum, conundrum. Thank you for bringing in that word. Conundrum, many people find themselves saying, Conundrum. Conundrum? No. You say conundrum. Now, Mwalimu John Muli of St. Charles Luanga Kitui. You say architecture. Architecture. Don't say archi. Architecture? No. Architect? 
No, you say, he is or she is an architect. Then, architecture. That is the way to pronounce that word. Your second word is fairly long. You say, verisimilitude, verisimilitude. I hope you get it right. Lastly, you say, London, London. Sometimes you may find somebody saying London, but London is the best. Now, let's come to Tungwal Mut of Ethiopia. You say, poignant. Poignant, not poignant. Avoid poignant. That is the spelling, but the pronunciation, poignant. That is the way. Evans Momani of Nairobi, you say data. Data, D-A-T-A, -A, data. But remember, you can also say data. So the two pronunciations are alternatives. They are both acceptable in standard English. So you say data or data. Christine Obare. Christine Obare, a.k.a. Mama Aboki, Irene Mama Twins, and Dorcas. Some may say Dorcas, but that R is silent when you're pronouncing that name. You say Dorcas. Dorcas Nabwire, a.k.a. Mama Ida, if you like Mama Ida. All of ex Margaret Nakuru. Well, those who are in Nakuru town, we give you a salute and any other part of this country for loving, mind your language the way you do. So, you say baking powder, baking powder, then county, not county, C-O-U-N-T-Y, you say county, not county. Then the last word, you say season, the festive season, not season, season, people may find themselves saying that, but you say season, and for this lady, Dokas Nabwire, I would say happy birthday. I know there are so many people who are celebrating their birthday just on this day. Please have it nice. So Dokas Nabwire and every other person in Nakuru, keep it up. Now we have Julius Olasia of Maseno. Yes, you say jeopardy. Jeopardy, not jeopardy. Jeopardy, no. Jeopardy. And then you say to jeopardize. The verb, you say jeopardize. What you avoid is geo. That O is silent in those words. Many people make that mistake. But as I always say, to a uh is human, and we all make mistakes. So long as we can learn from our mistakes, nothing big about it. Because nobody, nobody is spotless, my dear viewer. Now, let's come to the next person, and that is Lydia Namusina of Entebbe, Uganda. Oh, Ugandans, our dear brothers and sisters, we also give you a salute from Mind Your Language only on KTN. Now, Lydia Namusina of Entebbe, Uganda, you say torn, T-O-R-N, torn, that's the word you use. And then the second one, you say sweated, sweated, or sweated. That is the way. Julius Okoth Adika, Julius Okoth Adika, Faith Acheng Ooko, and Neema Marvel. You say Marvel, but you can also say Marvel for the name. So the three people also right here taking it and keeping it KTN are Julius Okothadika, Faith Achieng Ooko, and Neema Marvel of Ayego, Migori County. You say precedence to set precedence or a precedence. That is P-R-E-C-E-D-E, -E -E, precedence. And then your second word, you say to relinquish, relinquish, it's a verb. Now, thank you for loving KTN that much. Paul Mwaura Kamau, you say legal, legal, and calculation. Chantel Samara, oh, this is <laughs> three names beginning with the sound sh. So we have Chantel Samara, then Shania Mokaya, Shania Mokaya, and Shalene. Now, when you have those words and when you love good English, you'll always not go wrong when it comes to communicating if you have to use English language. So, the three, you say Valentine, Valentine. Don't say Valentine. We have Christine, but you say Valentine. Then, the second word, you say Tattle. And this word, I have to explain something about it. Many people, when you hear some people saying Tattles, Tattles or tattoos, you think that they're talking about the tortoise, Kobe. No. That is from the word turtle, turtle, T U R T L E, the other animal, which is more or less like a tortoise, but you say turtle, 
tatal or tato. There are people who pronounce it like that, but it's not. Don't pronounce mzekobe as totos or tatos or totas. Totas is the right one for mzekobe. You get that? Mzekobe, you say totas. But T-U-R-T-L-E, you say tattle, and when it is in plural, you say tattles or tattles. So get that difference because we have to create that distinction for knowing which is which. You get it right? Good. Now, Moses Gidinji, Moses Gidinji, you say disease, ugonjwa, disease. John Bunei, you say geography. John Bunei, your word can be very useful to many people. We always find ourselves saying geography or geography. Geography, nowhere in English. Geography, nowhere in English. Non-existent. You say geography, geography, that subject. Geography, that is the pronunciation. Abdi Yusuf Nur, you say gorilla for both words. The animal, gorilla. The war tactic, gorilla. Different spellings, different meanings, same pronunciation. Technically, we call such words homophones. So you only say gorilla for both of them. Now we have Kerry Muita of Korea West. Palcritude and palcritudinous. Tricky. Palcritude and palcritudinous. That is the way to pronounce the two words. Then we have Ndinda, Kasimu, Hamdi Mohammed, Saad Faraj Ahmed, Abi Tangus, Koitage Robert, Norman Makoha. Peter Trippier. Trippier, well, that name, I've never heard it. But Peter Trippier, keep it up. Tina Musimi, keep it up. Anne Kito, Cyprian Masinde, and Marcus Otieno Onyango. Keep it up because we are ready to give you just the very best. The KTN style, thorough, and always ensuring that you get it clearly and seriously. So... Keep watching. Now, it's that time when I take you back to taking a look at our screen so that you see our surprise word for tonight. And the surprise word for tonight means very unpleasant or very ugly. Very unpleasant. Just like when we talk about crime. So, you say hideous. Hideous. Don't say hideous. Hideous, no. Hideous. A hideous crime. That is the way to pronounce it. You can see it on your screen. Now, when we come to confusing words, we have the word H-A-S-T-E for hurry, to hurry. You say haste, haste, to be in haste. H-A-S-T-E. But please, H-E-I-S-T. When we talk about robbery, you don't say haste. Say a bank heist, heist. Can you say it? Can you repeat? Then remember it afterwards. That is heist, not haste for the second word which talks about robbery. Now, let's get to words that are tricky in spelling. And today, today being that day, I brought for you the words on the screen. And that is the first one. Christmas with a single S. That is the way to spell the word. Christmas. So I've given it a tick, the way you can just see. But the second one, when we have SS, that is a wrong spelling. So don't use double S or SS for that matter. So the right one is the upper one, and that is Christmas with a single S. Then when we come to X M A S. That is the way also to informally talk about Christmas, X-M-A-S. Don't use a hyphen and don't use double S. It's simply that capital X, then small M, then small A, and an S. And that is why you can see the tick or you can realize that I have given you the first one as the right way to spell it. So when you spell it, do exactly that. But don't use a hyphen, and don't use SS, dear viewers. Now, let's get to the much asked about words. Now, let us begin from something that is where I always tell you that we have what we call irregularities, some, not in every case. We have some irregularities in English spelling and pronunciation. Now, if you have the word pay, P-A-Y, you simply say pay. If I give you the word P-A-Y-S, you'll simply say pays. 
he pays the money in time, pays, or he pays that organization in time, pays, then paid, P-A-I-D. But please don't use that sounding, the sound system when you come to the words which are now on your screen. That is S-A-Y, yes, that one you say, say, to say something. The second one, S-A-Y-S, -S. you say, says, says, don't say says, says, no, says. And lastly, you say said for S-A-I-D, tricky. And I know it may surprise many people, but we have say, says, and said, full stop. Now, let's get to our next part, and that is where I know you have been really waiting for that, and that is the phonetic or sound symbols. And the symbol that we have for tonight is that glide, the vowel glide, ear. So if you can see, we have ear. We call it a diphthong. That is a glide involving two vowel sounds. A diphthong, for those who may not be aware, when it's talking about pronunciations. Now, that ear, the symbols are right there. Now, the examples. You can say dear. You can see the phonetic transcription, dear. Then, rea. Rea is tricky because many people find themselves saying rea. It's not rea, it's rea. With that diphthong, ear. Then, the next word is here. Here, H-E-R-E, -E, here. You can see that very, very glide. And then we have the next one is mea, mea, that example, mea, M-E-R-E. -E. Don't say mea. A mea, this, no, a mea. That is the way you say it, mea, dear viewers. So, that is the symbol when you are checking the pronunciation of a word in a good dictionary or a good dictionary. Always when you see those symbols, you know it's for the glide ear, and you get it right. Now, next week, next week, I know you must be waiting for it, and we have those words that you can now see on your screen. Next week, we have Y-E-A-R. How do you say it? Happy new? Happy new? <laughs> You'll allow me to say something just a little bit in Kiswahili. J, if you translate Happy New Year into Kiswahili, what would it be? What would it be? Happy New Year. Because <laughs> year is Sikio. So, Sikio Jipia. Sikio Jipia. You're wishing somebody Sikio Jipia. So that person may have a new year, Sikio. But anyway, next week. That is for Y E A R, E A R. Y-E-A-S-T, and lastly, E-A-S-T. We say we demystify for you the English phonology so that you get them right, but nobody, nobody, not even Willis, is perfect. But dear viewers, I've had one of the most enjoyable and refreshing year when it comes to mind your language. I know 2020 has been a very difficult year for so many people, in fact, Willis included. But for a year that we have run so well like that, and those who have been asking me just to allow them see that man, I always say, the man who gives you those clear shots for mind your language. He is right here with me tonight. I've requested him to come, and he's nobody but Fred Moturi. He is right here, and since we've really enjoyed this year with you, dear viewer, we tell you thumbs up and see you next year. Oh, <laughs>